G'day everyone! In this video I'm going to be sharing how I install the table in my bus. Now the table is kind of the last big thing I need to have in the bus in order to meet the criteria for registering as a motorhome because I've got a fixed bed, um, I've got my fixed cooking facilities, my stove in my kitchen cabinet. The kitchen cabinet counts as fixed storage and so the next thing I need is a table and that's what I'm going to be starting work on today. This is where my table's going to be going. So this is the passenger side of the bus. That's the entrance door there. And that's the set of shelves that you saw in my last video. And this is my kitchen cabinet here. And my table is basically going to be taking up the entire length of this window here. So it's going to be almost 1400 mil long, this table. So quite quite big and it's actually going to be hinged so that it flips up because at night time my bed's going to come out a fair way out to here um, so I want the table up out of the way so if I need to go to the bathroom or something in the middle of the night I can actually get past there and I also am going to be putting something a bit special under the table that I need access to so that's the reason why I'm having the table flipping up and the reason I wanted such a big table was because I need to be able to work on my business on the road and so I make handmade books and do jewellery and other things so I need a decent sized workspace to be able to sit and do that and also have space to get out my printer and sewing machine and other things that I need for the business and I wanted to have the table here so that it's looking out the view so if I'm parked out somewhere nice um, you know I'll have this beautiful view to look at while I'm working and as you can see I've taken off the just the thin ply sheet that I had lining the wall here because I've changed my mind a little bit about um, how I'm going to build out this area and I wanted to get the ply out of the way so I could see what studs and things I had behind and what I'm going to be doing here is actually attaching some more pieces of timber to the studs and the battens that I've already got in so mainly because of what I'm going to be putting under the table it needs a fair bit of support so I'm going to be putting in a few studs that I can mount my support brackets for that onto and then there'll also be another rail up here that will support the table so now before I do that um, I'm actually going to be lining this wall with the same shiplap boards that I did on the ceiling so you can see my boards up there for the ceiling I'm going to be using those same boards just to line this section of the wall because it will be visible if you look under the table and so you know I want it to look a little bit nice now before I go ahead and put the boards up to line the walls the first thing I'm going to do is just mark where I've got all these screws in this top batten here that I've got running along the wall because I'm wanting to screw another piece of timber into this and I obviously don't want to be screwing in and, and hitting the screws are already there so I'm just going to make some marks on the windowsill here that'll be covered when I put the window rubbers back in just so I know where these screws are so when I screw the next piece on I'll be able to avoid those I've got a couple of friends keeping me company today too just outside the bus window here there's a female king parrot enjoying the seeds in the tree up there And Peppa's here with me today too. Normally when I'm working on the bus, Peppa's over in the house yard where she can run around freely. It's all fully fenced over there. But today there's a snake in there and she's freaking out about that, understandably. So she's over here with me today. Okay, so you can see I've just put little dots on the window sill here that correspond with my screws. So I've marked all of those and down here I've also marked the height of this batten that I've got because this batten doesn't sit directly on the floor it's a bit of a um, distance off the floor so I've actually marked here where it is and at the other end here as well because now what I'm going to do is put the insulation back on this section and so you won't be able to see uh, any of this it's, it's about to be covered up okay so now that that's done I'm going to line this with the shiplap boards and they're going to be screwed into those timber studs that you saw inside the wall so I've got one at this end 
um, I've got one here in the middle and another one here so I'm going to be screwing my boards into that. You can see how easy these shiplap boards are to put up. Um, it's a bit different to tongue and groove. If you saw the video where I put these boards on the ceiling, I um, showed the difference between these and the more traditional sort of tongue and groove boards and how much easier these are to put together. Um, they're, but especially when you're doing it vertically like this, one just sits on top of the other and they all just fit nicely. You're not trying to fit a narrow little tongue into a groove um, like you are on the tongue and groove boards. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with these. And once these screw holes are all filled in and it's all painted, it'll look schmick. So this last board that I put on is going to be a little bit trickier because I have to trim it to size. It's obviously not as high as a full board. If I measure this, it's about 115 mil, which is pretty much where... Um, the lip starts on this so I'm gonna have to cut this little flange off which I'll just do on the table saw that should be okay and then at the end here I'm gonna have to cut a little notch out to get around um, the end of this cabinet here so yeah a bit tricky but should be doable wall is lined. So the next thing I want to do is put in three studs, like three vertical studs on this wall and they're going to be the main supports for um, the brackets that are going to hold up my special thing under the table here. Now because of the way that the wall angles out here it actually kind of from the floor um, up to the windowsill it angles out towards like the outside of the bus so and I need these studs to be square because I want to attach like right angle brackets to them so in order to get them square I've worked out that if I attach another piece of 19 mil thick pine here that will bring the top bit of this wall out in line with the bottom so that it the studs will be square and then my studs can screw into that um, and this batten I've got down the bottom here so I'm going to run this rail first and then I'll be able to attach my three studs from there. Okay, well, I don't know what I was doing when I first worked this out, but even with the 19mm thick piece at the top here, it's still not quite square. Like you can see, if I put this stud where it needs to be to be square to the floor, see it's quite a way out from this rail still. And in fact, when I measure this distance here, it's actually not about 9mm that I still need to add to this in order to get these studs square. So I do actually have, I think, some bits of 9mm ply in the shed. So what I'm thinking of doing is just, hopefully I've got something long enough. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> anyway, I'll see. I'm just going to cut a strip of the 9mm ply to fit over that and then that should bring the top of these studs out just the right distance so that they're square to the floor. We'll give that a go. Okay, so I've got some 9mm ply here. I didn't have a piece that was long enough to go the whole route, but that shouldn't matter. It really only needs to cover the distance um, where the studs are getting screwed in. And the whole thing's going to be covered with the tabletop, so you're not really going to see it anyway. Um, so if I put this here, I can attach it to that. And then if I get my stud now and put that up there so now this stud is uh, square to the floor which is perfect so I'll just attach this probably just glue 
and with a, a few nails it won't need much because it's going to get other things screwed into it which will hold it on it's just really to keep it up there while I get these studs in for now I should have done. <laughs> I should have marked where my screws are in this thing. I'll do that actually. and pre-drill and countersink this hole where the screw is going through because it's pretty close to the end and I do not want this to split because I don't have enough timber to cut more pieces this length. So you can see how I've just pre-drilled that hole and countersunk it so hopefully when this screw goes in it's not going to split this piece. I hope. <laughs> so far so good. I'm using pretty big screws to secure these in. These are actually 60 millimeters long and that's because they're going through the studs which are 30 mil through my 9 mil ply and the 20 mil rail that I did. So that's 60 mil there. Um, and if I'm countersinking them a little bit, so they're actually going to go through all, through all of that. So they're going to be really well and truly secure, which is what I want because they do need to support a little bit of weight. I had to make this one a little bit shorter because obviously it's right above where the battery hatch is. And I need to make sure I can still get that in and out. Okay, so that's the three studs that I needed for the thing underneath the table. So now what I can do is go ahead and build the support that the tabletop is going to sit down um, on top of. So basically my plan with this table is that the top's going to be in two pieces. There'll be like a narrower piece along the top here that's going to be screwed into this timber rail along the windowsill here. Um, and that'll be hinged then to the main tabletop piece, which will then be able to flip up this way. And I'll obviously have some way of holding it up there at the top. But what I'm going to do now is just build the support that will actually hold the table when it's, when it's down. So I'm going to fill in the gaps along here with 30 mil thick stuff. And I'm also going to run uh, a strip along here. And a strip along here and I'll be able to attach some aluminium angle to that and that'll provide really good support for my tabletop. Okay so the table supports are all done. So you can see here I've got some aluminium angle which is pretty strong and I just attached that in the same way that I did the shelves in the kitchen cabinet if you saw that video just drilled some holes in the angle and screwed it into the timber piece behind and that is really strong so yeah if you're wondering what this gap is here it's to allow for power cords to come up from underneath the table so eventually I'm going to have a power point here under the table and I'm going to have a little hole cut in the table so that I can feed power cords up through that into whatever I'm using on top of the table so that's the reason for that little gap there so yeah looking good so far the next job of course now is to cut out the panel for the table and get that in there this is what I'm going to be using for my table it's just a laminated pine panel that I bought from Bunnings cost me about 80 bucks um, it's 18 millimeters thick 
and it's all solid pine it's just been finger jointed together all the different pieces so that's what I'm going to be using and I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to stain this so it's a little bit darker and hopefully it'll look nice Okay, so that's pretty much what it's going to look like. Of course, I still have to stain this. This is just the raw pine at the moment. Hopefully, it'll look nicer once I stain it up a bit. Um, one thing I'm not happy about is that you can see here the table, see how it kind of overhangs this shelf unit a little bit. It doesn't do that at the other end. It kind of is nice and flush with the edge of the cabinet. I stupidly made this thing 10 millimeters shorter than this. I'm not sure why I did that, um, but that's really annoying me now. The fact that this table is sticking out a bit looks a bit shitty. So, but what I'm going to do is um, I've just got a piece of 9 mil ply here. So I'm just going to add that piece of 9 mil ply to the front of this, which will mean um, that this table is sort of flush with that and I'll be able to put some extra little trim pieces on the front here and um, to neaten it all up and once it's stained I think it'll just look like it was meant to be like in part of the shelf so I'm going to do that uh, just because that wasn't really fitting with my OCD <laughs> um, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with it so the next job is to um, cut a strip off the table here so that I've got my two pieces that I'll hinge so that this main part can uh, flip up. Um, and I'll just show you how my stove's going to work. I made this little door for the stove hole the other day. I don't think I've shown you guys this yet, but it's basically just a piece of pine. Um, it's got a hole cut in it so um, I can pull it out. I didn't want any big handles sticking out because obviously this table needs to be able to hinge up just past it. Um, so I just put a couple of these little latch bolts in to hold it in place and so it just comes out and my stove will pull out uh, and I can cook on the table here. Um, and it works out well because this stove is like right in front of the window then so if I need to get rid of some fumes or smoke or anything while I'm cooking I can just open the window. So yeah back in so I'm actually really happy with how that stove setup's working yeah really happy with that um, that all will obviously get painted when I finish off the kitchen cabinet as well and you can also see my bench top I've just got it sitting here at the moment it hasn't been properly cut to size or secured down it also hasn't been oiled yet so this is just the raw state um, from Bunnings but yeah that's what my bench top's gonna look like before staining the tabletop I just gave it a light sand with some fine sandpaper and then to get the color I wanted I actually used a mix of two different stains both of them are Cabot's interior timber stain and first of all I gave it a coat of um, a color called Sutherland Teak and then once that was dry I then painted over it with a very light coat of walnut and as you can see I'm just doing the walnut in small sections at a time and pretty much wiping it off straight away so it's not producing too dark a color and I just found that using the two different stains together gave me the color that I wanted okay well here's the finished tabletop in position after I stained this tabletop I did three coats of clear varnish over the top I did the first two coats and then I just gave it a really light sand with very fine sandpaper before I did the third coat and I'm really happy with how it's turned out um, I mean it's not going to last in this condition for long once I start using it it's bound to get scratches and scuff marks and things but that's okay I'm really happy with the color and you can see I've cut the little notch here um, for my power cords to come up through and I also have put this piece of ply 9mm ply on the side of this so as you can see now that table sits nice and flush with that and I mean I don't think that looks too bad at some stage down the track I might come and put some extra little bits of trim 
Um, but at the moment it just looks like it's part of the whole rustic thing. I'm not really worried about it to be honest. Um, now I was going to hinge this tabletop but because it's so lightweight what I'm thinking of doing now is actually rather than hinging it I'm just going to put a few latch bolts the same as what I used on the cabinet door here just to keep it secure while I'm driving and then that way when I want to get it up and out of the way I just have to undo the bolts and lift the whole thing up and just lean it against the wall underneath there because the thing is if I have it hinged to flip up against this window then whenever the table's up it will come up to about here just below where these handles are and so it's going to block you know 80% of the view out my window and there might be times when I want the table to be up but still be able to see out the window so doing it this way uh, just means that the table is well and truly out of the way when I don't need it but the latches will keep it secure when I'm driving. So I've just got these latch bolts here. They're slightly bigger than the ones I used on the cabinet. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is sort of put one in each corner at the back here. Something like that. And then I've got a couple more that I'll put at the front here. Uh, so something like that so it'll have these four latches I don't think it looks that bad it sort of fits with the rustic style of the rest of what I'm going to put in here and because my table's so big they're not going to interfere or get in the way of anything I want to put on there so I'm happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and install those now and once that's done the table will be finished one removable table so now that that's done I've just got a few small jobs to finish off and then hopefully I can get the inspector out and get my bus registered 